Here I've reconstructed their faces to show what they'd look like in real life. If you want me to make a video about any historical figure, please comment below this video. Thanks. Empress Elizabeth of Austria. Empress Elizabeth of Austria, born Duchess Elizabeth in Bavaria. The 24th of December 1837 to the 10th of September 1898 was Empress of Austria and Queen of Hungary by marriage to Emperor Franz Joseph I. Duchess in Bavaria. She was the third child and second daughter of Duke Maximilian Joseph in Bavaria and Princess Ludovica of Bavaria. Cici and her siblings grew up in a very unrestrained and unstructured environment. She often skipped her lessons to go riding about. Helena was a pious, quiet young woman, and she and Franz Joseph felt ill at ease in each other's company, but he was instantly infatuated with her younger sister. He did not propose to Helena, but defied his mother and informed her that if he could not have Elizabeth, he would not. Five days later their betrothal was officially announced. The couple were married eight months later in Vienna at the Augustinerkirch on 24 April 1854. The marriage was finally consummated three days later, and Elizabeth received a dower equal to $240,000 Empress of Austria. After enjoying an informal and unstructured childhood, Elizabeth, who was shy and introverted by nature, within a few weeks, Elizabeth started to display health problems. She had fits of coughing and became anxious and frightened whenever she had to descend a narrow steep staircase. She was surprised to find she was pregnant and gave birth to her first child, a daughter, Archduchess Sophie of Austria, 1855-1857, just ten months after her wedding. The elder Archduchess Sophie, who often referred to Elizabeth as a silly young mother, her mother-in-law is generally considered to be the source of the malicious pamphlet. The accusation of political meddling referred to Elizabeth's influence on her husband regarding his Italian and Hungarian subjects. When she traveled to Italy with him she persuaded him to show m In December 1857 Elizabeth became pregnant for the third time in as many years, and her mother, who had been concerned about her daughter's physical and mental health, hoped that this new pregnancy would help her recover. Benjamin. At 173 centimeters, 5 feet 8 inches, Elizabeth was unusually tall. Even after four pregnancies she maintained her weight at approximately 50 kilograms, 110 pounds, for the rest of her life. She achieved this through fasting and exercise, such as gymnastics and mourning after her daughter Sophie's death. Elizabeth refused to eat for days. A behavior that would reappear in later periods of melancholy and depression. Dot. Whereas she previously had supper with the family, she now began to avoid this, and if she did eat with them, she ate quickly and Elizabeth emphasized her extreme slenderness through the practice of tight lacing. During the peak period of 1859-60, which coincided with Franz Joseph's political and military defeats in Italy, her sexual withdrawal from her husband after three pregnancies in rapid success, although on her return to Vienna in August 1862, a lady-in-waiting reported that she eats properly, sleeps well, and does not tight lace and her clothing from this time until her death still measured only 18 and a half 19 and a half inches around the waist, which prompted the Prince of Hesse to describe her as almost inhumanly slender. In her youth Elizabeth followed the fashions of the age, which for many years were cage crinolined hoop skirts, but when fashion began to change, she was at the forefront of abandoning the hoop skirt for a tighter and leaner silhouette. She never wore petticoats or beauty. In addition to her rigorous exercise regimen, Elizabeth practiced demanding beauty routines. Daily care of her abundant and extremely long hair, which in time turned from the dark blonde of her youth to chestnut brunette, took at least three hours. Hairdressing takes almost two hours, she said, and while my hair is busy, my mind stays idle. I am afraid that my mind escapes through the hair and onto the fingers of my hairdresser. Hence my headache after. The empress sat at a table which was moved to the middle of the room and covered with a white cloth. She was shrouded in a white, laced peignoir, her hair, unfastened and reaching to the floor, enfolded her entire body. After age 32, she decided she did not want the public image of the eternal beauty challenged. Therefore, she did not sit for any more portraits, and would not allow any photographs. The few photos taken without her knowledge show a woman who was graceful, but almost marriage. Franz Joseph was passionately in love with his wife, but she did not reciprocate his feelings fully and felt increasingly stifled by the rigidness of court light. Elizabeth slept very little and spent hours reading and writing at night, and even took up smoking, a shocking habit for women which made her the further subject of already avid gossip, or thee, like thine own seabirds. I'll circle without rest. 
For me earth holds no corner. To build a lasting nest it was an emotionally complex woman, and perhaps due to the melancholy and eccentricity that was considered a given characteristic of her Wittelsbach lineage, the best known member of the family being her favorite cousin, the eccentric Ludwig II of Bavaria. Assassination. In 1898, despite warnings of possible assassination attempts, the 60-year-old Elizabeth traveled incognito to Geneva, Switzerland. However, someone from the Hotel Beau Rivage revealed that the Empress of Austria at 1.35 p.m. on Saturday 10 September 1898, Elizabeth and Countess Irma Sture de Stara at Najimihai, her lady-in-waiting, left the hotel on the shore of Lake Geneva on foot to catch the steamship Geneve for Montreux. Since the Empress despised processions, she insisted that they walk without the other members of her office. They were walking along the promenade when the 25-year-old Italian anarchist Luigi Luceni approached them, attempting to peer underneath the Empress's parasol. According to Stare, as the ship's bell announced the departure, Luceni seemed to stumble and made a movement with his hand as if he wanted to maintain his balance. Struck her, the Empress collapsed. A coach driver helped her to her feet and alerted the Austrian concierge of the Beau Rivage, a man named Planner who had been watching the Empress's progress toward the Geneve. Legacy. Upon her death, Franz Joseph founded the Order of Elizabeth in memory of her. In the Volksgarten of Vienna, there is an elaborate memorial monument featuring a seated statue of the Empress by Hans Bitterlich, dedicated on 4 June 1907. On the promenade in Territet, Switzerland, there is a monument to the Empress created by Antonio Chiaton, de, in 1902. This town is between Montreux and Chateau Chillon. The inscription mentions her many visits.